your site has anywhere from 4.5 million to 5 million uh, subscribers. What have you discovered about infidelity through the movement on your site? So not to brag, but I think the number is over 7 million. You know, as of late, we're in Australia, we're in the UK, nine countries, three languages. And so I think there's a global demand and, and a void that Ashley Madison fills, which is, you know, there's intimacy vacuums in so many marriages that people don't know how to fill other than having an affair. Do you think we're having unrealistic expectations of what marriage can deliver in, in our modern times? Well, I think there's this, again, mistaken notion out there that somehow the institution of marriage has always been static. <laughs> this is the way it's always looked, as opposed to somehow it being a very polygamous institution, even now in many parts of the world, and you know, clearly historically being the case, or that not that long ago we were married by arrangement and rather than for love, or that the, the motivation for a lot of people you know, getting married was the absence of premarital sex, which really isn't the commonplace in Western culture right now. And so we seem to pretend as if this institution was always about heterosexual monogamous marriage when that's just really a much more recent phenomenon and so its evolution is clearly upon us whether that same-sex unions joining the institution whether it's people in open marriages considering themselves married whether the establishment likes it or not or whether monogamy can survive the fact that we have you know a lifelong expectation that my children might live to be a hundred years old that it just may not survive that capability a woman in an affair Many women say they have more to lose because they take direct care of the kids. They're holding the family together. Truth or fallacy from what you're seeing? I think there's, some, there's just some paradigm changing going on. So women, the more successful they are, just have a higher propensity to have an affair. The bigger the disparity between their success and their partner's la lack of success, or if that's not the phrase you want to use, as that gap widens, again, the more likely that their partner's going to have an affair. And so, so many factors come into play. The biggest thing is that affairs are very linked to opportunity. And so the first jump you had in female infidelity is when they too were part of the workplace. When we built this site, we were super confident that men would come online to pursue an affair. But all the research I had come across indicated that women had that affair in one of two places, that circle of influence and or the workplace. And so we were gonna have to almost create this notion of anonymous affairs, of going online and pursuing something like this. And so everything we did from day one, from the design of the site to the brand that we have, Ashley Madison, to the TV commercials we created, the infomercials, the radio spots, were all about attracting and making women feel comfortable, making them realize that this was an environment created for them. And so, you know, there, there's a change coming. It's, it's just, it's upon us and we've helped kind of, you know, instigate that, but it's, it, it's really society's change that we're just reflecting. Would it surprise you that 25% of the women on our service are single women? We don't have that phenomenon on the male side. These are women clearly saying, hey, a good man's really hard to find. And if you've got one, and for whatever reason, aren't going to take care of him, I'm willing to do that because I'm not looking right now for X, Y, and Z kids, white picket fence, whatever it ends up being. You know, and, and as for that, you know, that, that desperate housewife that you believe is on services like mine or having an affair, she's there for that revalidation that I was describing earlier. She really does and needs to be an object of desire once again, whether that's because she's moved on in an age and that's when she felt more comfortable was in her youth or because she's truthfully neglected and the way that many men would sit there and say, hey, I need water to drink and air to breathe and I need sexual fulfillment. That woman too needs intimacy is probably a better phrase, needs to be touched, needs to be you know, romanticized. And so absent that doesn't feel complete and doesn't feel happy. And so really what you're talking about is the pursuit of happiness for these people. Some of your critics who are dealing with marital crisis say that you're a family smasher, a marriage smasher, really an immoral organization. How do you feel about that? Yeah, no, listen, if those are the worst labels thrown at me, you know, then they're, they're probably better than some of the ones I've heard from the kingpin of infidelity, king of infidelity, the most controversial website ever created. Those are all kind of uh, notions that have been bandied about. I think in the end, again, it's a m misconception about infidelity in the first part. Couples can and do recover from it. If, if spoken to a number of years later after that D-Day, that discovery day, I think many couples would tell you, hey, listen, that infidelity, while painful, was actually a litmus test. It was, it, it was the impetus for us to finally change and repair our relationship. So, you know, absent it, we may have ended up apart. And so it's a marriage preservation tool for a lot of people during the time and afterwards it can be a way to finally fix what by all accounts is a broken relationship. And I think, again, it just, you know, to call it some sort of family smasher, that's just people's attempt to sit there and say, infidelity, equals breakup of marriage, bad for kids. 
I don't disagree with the bad for kids part. You know, if we have a problem in Western cultures, it's too many children raised by single parents, and the data seems to bear out that those children have less opportunities, less opportunities with higher education, more problems around drug and alcohol abuse, for sure. But then address the causation. Why are so many children being raised? Why in America now is it going to be 46% of children are going to be raised by single moms? Is it infidelity? That's ridiculous. If you're setting marriages up to fail because you're saying, hey, it's got to be monogamous, it's got to be then this is where you're going to end up. Try addressing the causation of issues if you want to get to where you want to get to. What about sexual addiction? Tiger Woods, the sex addict, are you spawning a whole generation of new sex addicts? I'm not really sure I buy the sexual addiction argument and I'm happy to be proven incorrect by anyone who, who does look at it. But to me, you know, I guess my notions of addiction are more about, um, you know, almost becoming, you know, non-functional in your life and it just consumes you and, and and so there are functioning addicts I know and people will push back on it but you know by all accounts Tiger Woods this treatment for sex addiction you know this guy was playing the most complicated of sports games whatever you want to call it at the highest level while all this was going on it seems strange to me that you know we would view him as an addict and I think when you're talking about a biological driver here which sex is right you know procreation um, it's pretty hard to call people an addict now if you told me that someone can't get through the day of their work, can't eat meals, or can't do anything because they're playing with themselves all day long, yeah, they probably have a problem. Aren't you encouraging it then? Am I encouraging the addiction? I don't think you can encourage addiction. I mean, well, are you I, giving I, them the whiskey when there shouldn't be? Yeah, but isn't that what we decided as a society a long time ago? We tried and have tried prohibitions many times. And so, you know, they just don't really work. And, you know, whether it's your war on drugs, your ability to sell, you know, alcohol, cigarettes, these are products that literally are going to lead to disease and addiction and kill tens of thousands of Americans and Canadians this year alone. And they're allowed to advertise because we know it's futile to stop people from pursuing those vices. Can it be any more futile to try and tell people how to behave in their sexual life? <laughs> that seems to me to be just beyond moronic. You're not going to ever stop people from doing that. And so you can shut down Craigslist. You can tell me not to exist anymore. But I assure you, if Ashley Masson didn't exist tomorrow, the exact same amount of infidelity would happen uh, you know, later this week than it was going to happen with my presence. Have I taken a different bend on it? Have I tried to improve upon its discretion? Have I tried to perfect it in my own way? Absolutely, that's what a good entrepreneur does. But I just do not have the power that people want to afford me. I cannot convince a happily married person, a ha person in a happy relationship to go and stray on their partner, no matter what I say to them, whether it's in person, one-on-one, -on -one, through a TV commercial, uh, just not possible.